Hello book people, P.T. Hilton here with potentially my nerdiest video ever. So about 10 years ago maybe or so, uh, DC Comics started putting out these Absolute Editions, which are some of the most popular works um, repackaged and uh, reprinted in like archival quality, very large format, and also very, very expensive. Uh, they retail for around $100. You can get them for less. I'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah, basically when they first announced them, I was like, what kind of crazy people would spend $100 on a edition of a popular comic book? So, of course, I now have two of them, and I'm hoping to get more. Basically, my basic book buying strategy this year is uh, changed a little bit. Instead of buying lots of books, I'm trying to buy way less books. Most of the books I'm reading uh, come from the library. When I do buy them, they come in ebook form, usually. Uh, that's my plan for 2015. The main thing I want to spend money on are the uh, Penguin Clothbound Classics editions and the Absolutes. So, Absolutes are absolutely cool in my opinion. They all have uh, this hard slip cover case. They all have a sweet little ribbon. They're printed on archival quality paper and they're much larger than normal. Just to give you an idea how large they are, um, here is a absolute edition compared with your standard trade paperback and also compared with an omnibus which is the oversized normal oversized editions that you'll see. Why does large size matter in these absolutes? Well, a couple of reasons. Um, for one, a negative, it is sometimes hard to find shelf space for them. Like if you have a normal, slightly smaller bookshelf, it, they might not even fit on there. Um, so that's something to take into consideration. But on the good side, it's much closer to the size that the artists actually drew it at. So you get a lot more detail. So some of these, like in absolute Superman here, uh, beautiful artwork by Frank Whiteley and uh, you can see it in a lot more detail and it's very very beautiful so i really like these editions i have two of them i'm going to be getting more i'm basically putting all my book buying budget towards these and towards the clockbound classics for the rest of the year so maybe every other month or so i can get i can get one of these and uh you know other than that i'm just going to the library and i do still have my audible uh, subscription so any new release that i absolutely have to have i can get through there and listen to on audio. I want to talk a little bit about the actual books and stories themselves. Um, All-Star Superman is probably my favorite uh, Superman story of all time. Quickly on the cover, you can see if I hold it at just the right angle, you can see that there is this cool uh, Superman logo on there. It also comes with this dust jacket, and if I take off the dust jacket, you can see another beautiful iconic image of uh, underneath there. Basically, this is a story by um, written by Grant Morrison, art by Frank Coitley, and it is a uh, kind of out of continuity Superman story, my favorite Superman story of all time. And it is about uh, Superman basically gets this disease and he's dying. And uh, he has these 12 mighty tasks he's going to accomplish before he dies. So it's about him doing that. And it's just a beautiful story. It really uh, encapsulates what Superman's all about. I'm not the hugest Superman fan, but I'm a huge fan of this story and the way they bring in that, you know, even with those 12 tasks, you can see what they're doing uh, as far as like the mythology, the, the, the idea of Superman as a, as a modern kind of mythical or folk kind of icon, hero kind of thing. And they bring a lot of that. They bring in a lot of very science fiction-y elements. It's a very weird story, like, as far as all the science fiction elements in it. So there's that. I love that about it. It's just a beautiful story with a beautiful ending. Grant Morrison, if you've ever, ever read any of his stuff, he's a very intricate writer. There's so much foreshadowing, so much imagery and symbolism. I just really, really love this story and this book, and uh, I was excited to get it in this cool edition. Also in the end, they have some really cool uh, character sketches and things about the characters that are very interesting. I do, if you do get the Absolute Edition, I do recommend not reading the introduction if you've not read the story before. There are some spoilers in there, but it brings out some very interesting stuff in the story as well. So after you've read the book, go back and read the introduction. Next I want to talk about uh, Sandman. Here's the Sandman Absolute Edition. It's got these cool kind of ridges along the spine to make it look like an old like old leather bound book and then it's got this weird kind of like opaque paper on the between the the between the end page and like the title page. Very cool and again it's got the ribbon. It's got the, uh, these editions were recolored 
um, very beautiful. The thing I want to talk about about Sandman, because you probably, you know, I don't need to review this work, but um, the biggest thing about Sandman, I think people wonder, is what edition should I get? Because there's so many editions out there. First of all, you may not have to pay for it at all, because almost every library, if you have a library near you, um, carries this. Like, if they only carry two graphic novels, this is probably one of those two. So check your library, first of all, if, if you haven't read it before, before you drop money on it, because it is kind of a book that, uh, a love it or hate it kind of book, I think a lot of people don't love it, so find out if you're one of those people before you drop a gazillion dollars on it. There are some trade paperbacks out as well. There's like a slipcase edition of the trade paperbacks that's very cool that I would recommend as well. If you do go, go that route though, um, make sure you're getting like the newer editions that were recolored. Uh, the thing is like originally when these were printed in the comic book form, the paper quality was not the best. So the coloring was um, kind of geared towards that paper quality. So it doesn't look that great when it's printed on nicer paper. Uh, so it's been recolored recently, so make sure you get the recolored uh, version if you're going for the trade paperbacks. There's also the annotated versions, which uh, probably do not recommend those, if it's, especially if it's your first time reading the series. That Those are in black and white, and they're basically full of all kinds of notes about what all references to what everything means and, and all that stuff, which is cool, but you know, if you're reading it for the first time, it would be kind of like watching a movie with the director's commentary on the first time you saw it. Probably not the best experience. Then there's the Omnibuses, yeah, Omnibuy, Omnibuses, which is a two volume edition, um, a little bit smaller, like that Omnibus I showed, uh, bigger than the trade, but smaller than the Absolute Edition. That's the entire 75 issue series in two volumes, which is cool. It looks nice and everything. My only concern with that is it's so. Big. I mean, it's got like um, 38 issues per book, so this can be a seriously thick book, and I'd be a little worried about the binding over time on that, but uh, still uh, be, be one way to go as well. Those, I think, retail for $150. The Omnibuses, I'm sorry, the Absolutes retail for $100, but there's four of them, so that's the most expensive way to go. Here is the Absolute Edition one more time. Um, what I do like about these is... Uh, it's got lots of really cool features. I love the bigger artwork, um, although the, with Sandman, the artwork isn't really the star of the show, but still, uh, the special features are really cool in this one, and the, at the end, it's got the original Sandman proposal by, by Neil Gaiman, including some crappy sketches by him. It's also got um, a script to one of the issues uh, alongside like the penciled sketches for that issue, so that is very cool. Um, this is a great collection. I'm going to be getting volumes two, three, and four. Probably not five. Five is like some extra stories that I have in other formats, but uh, two, three, and four is the complete normal uh, issues one through 75, the complete series. So I will, will be getting those. Um, this first edition is great. It's got some of my favorite stories, um, such as the, uh, the Dream of a Thousand Cats. It's one of my favorites, as well as Midsummer Night's Dream. So there you go. Those are the two absolute editions I have. If uh, again, it costs a lot of money, but uh, I get my omnibuses through uh, InStockTrades.com, which is a great, great family-owned um, company. I've been buying from them for a long time, and they have like 45% off on these usually, I think. I got both of these for around $57 as opposed to $100, so uh, that is a great way to buy them. I, I, def I highly endorse their, their service. It's great. That's going to do it for me. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.